The mixing of lime mortar is very straightforward, whether by hand or by machine. If we're mixing by hand, what we have to do is to receive the putty, to actually mix it in a dry mix with a shovel, constantly turning the mix so that we distribute the lime evenly throughout the mix. And at this stage, whilst it might appear over firm, we do not add any water because the mixing process actually frees up the mortar and makes it into a far more pliable mix. The larry is a traditional three-pronged tool which distributes the lime and the aggregate or sand evenly throughout the mix and is very easy and efficient to use. Today the three-pronged garden cultivator achieves the same end result and is very easy to use. However, with the mixing, various local practices use tools and devices to hand and so it is whatever works for you to achieve the same end result. The mix in its straightforward form, lime and sand, has over the years included a number of different elements which has affected its performance and longevity. When lime was burnt in traditional kilns, the mixture of ash and some clay from the structure of the kiln gave the lime mortar an added strength through a pozzolanic quality which today with a very pure lime can be missing. What we do where we have particularly exposed areas of masonry we can add elements which give that same quality. The most common additive to pure lime is a crushed brick. How we gain the uh, brick dust or small particles of brick varies depending on what machinery is available but quite often the simple practice of putting a soft fired brick inside a sack and then crushing it by blows from a sledgehammer or a lump hammer reduces the brick to a usable additive and also saves it being spread across a wider area. You actually contain the mix. The brick dust can be added to a mix and have quite a dramatic accelerating set on the overall mix and giving it again a far more durable finish where this is required. The ratio by which we add brick dust to a mix is approximately 1 to 10. And so we do this quite simply using a measuring jug or some form of measuring device so that we have a consistent mix across an area of work. The brick dust does affect the colour, so we need to be mindful that uh, we get a slightly pink or orange tinge to it, depending on the colour of the brick. Mixing mortar in a bucket using a power drill or dedicated device creates a very smooth and even mix which is particularly good for render or plaster repairs and the ratio that we generally use for such mixes is two of a sharp or concrete in sand one of a soft sand and one of lime putty again we must avoid the temptation to add water because the mixing process again gives a mortar which is very pliable and if we add too much water then we're liable to have shrinking cracks and also to have too sloppy a mix which would then disfigure the brickwork or stonework or whatever area of masonry that we're working on. Mixing lime mortar in a conventional cement mixer can be problematic 
if the sequence isn't correct. What we need to do is to add the sand or aggregate first and then add the lime putty. What this does is allow the lime putty to actually rotate in the drum and mix with the aggregate and then as it tumbles to gain more and more of the dry mix until such time as we have a thoroughly mixed mortar. If we add the putty first then it simply sticks to the inside of the drum and rotates and doesn't mix with the sand. For large quantities of mortar the most efficient means of preparing the mix is using the traditional pan mixer. Up until the mid 20th century pan mixers were very common in builders yards but their use with the advent of cement mortars went out of fashion until the late 80s. Today you can buy them and for building companies they're an essential tool where they're doing a lot of traditional mortar mixing. The pressing of the lime putty and the sand in the base of the pan is a very thorough mix and it's simply a case of loading the mixer and then receiving the mortar in a barrow or other carrying device and taking it to the site where it's to be used.